Hey, what's going on people, it's your man the YB, back once again. So, as you all probably know by now, Fake Paul, aka Jake the Fake Paul, just knocked the head off of a £155, I don't know what you'd call him, bare knuckle, I mean, I'd just call him Lucy Goosey, a £155 dude, who probably, if, if there was a sport, not boxing, if it, made, if it made a new sport, that was defined by how leaky you can be. <laughs> Mike Perry, he gonna be in up there for sure. Yeah. If you had a sport where having no defense was graded, he'd be top top marks. The leakiest looking out coming full like <laughs> beak in the air. Anywho, after that fight, Jake Paul jumps on the blower, all gassed up, and calls out Alex Pereira. Now Anthony Joshua has urged. Pereira to switch to boxing and handle that for the team, handle that for the mandem. Yeah, obviously, just because Johnston couldn't handle the heat from the Ukraine, he let us man down. Yeah, he don't want to see this goof troop fake Paul get off on the sport anymore. At least use it was a boxer. Yeah, he light in the back, but at least he a boxer. So Anthony Joshua was urging Pereira to switch to boxing and handle that work. That needs to be handled. Anyway, let's get to the quotes from from Fake Paulus. Because this guy is a proper goober. Seriously. One of the top goobers I've ever seen. The way he carries on. Mike Tyson. Your next big boy signed the contract. November 15th on Netflix. I'm excited for that one. I'm going to go home prepare for that. And Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira, you said you want to box. I'm the king of this. I'm the king of this. Come over. We can make it happen. I want you, Alex Pereira. You want the UFC light heavyweight champion, Alex Pereira? Indeed. Indeed. I just beat a, a BKFC champion. I beat multiple UFC champions, and he said he wants to box. So, Alex Pereira, after Mike Tyson, let's make it happen. Is the Mike Tyson... Hi. Hey. What? Hi. So, people. I heard there from the top number one goof troop of all time, Fake Paul. Yeah, and when Arrow says to him, "Oh, you want to fight the UFC light heavyweight champion, Jake Paul?" He doesn't just say yes. He he starts giving context like it makes sense. He goes, "Yeah, I just beat a one fifty five, a one seventy five bare knuckle champion. I've been beating UFC champions, so why not?" Fake Paul. Yeah, you are delusional. You're in boxing. You're in boxing. It's like you might as well take him to table tennis. <laughs> essentially, and beat them there and say, I'm, oh, I'm a table tennis player and I'm beating them at table tennis. Well, well done, what do you want a cookie? And at the start, I kind of made allowances for it. I thought, okay, he's, stuck, he's brand new, he's green. But as he's got bigger and and softer, yeah, he's, this right here, people, is, it, I mean, listen, it's one thing when you're a 150-pound dude soaking wet and you're a bit of an internet neek, like fake pool was. But once you're 230 pounds... And looking like a big old bag of milk here, yeah. it's time to start actually doing something now. The whole shtick of, oh, I'm learning on the job. Because you're not learning anyway. You're actually not. I didn't see no improvement nowhere. Not one thing that I see better. Fake pool hasn't changed in the last, well, I'm trying to think, since really. Silver. Silver. That was the last time there was any kind of updates. If, if, if even then, he just backpedal. He backpedal. And fights little dude so he can catch him with that clumsy jab. Because when he was in there with someone his own size, like Tommy Fury, he didn't land no jabs. He seldom landed a jab. Yeah, he sort of knocked down with it. But people, Tommy Fury's got no chin. And he went life and death with him. He should have been knocked out. If there was anyone he was going to knock out, it should have been Tommy. But he didn't knock him out, so forget about that one. Anyway, Pereira's now seen these call-outs. And in fact, here's the, here's the um, fake pull actually uh, picked the phone up. To call it El Potan. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, my boy. Let's go, my boy. Will Dana let you out? Will Dana so Jake Paul says, will Dana let you out of your contract? Will Dana let you out? Yes. We'll talk to him, we'll talk to him. Alex's manager says, we'll talk to him. Jen. Yeah. Fake Paul said, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Follow up. Your light work. So, listen, fake Paul. Yeah? 
if it was the bigger day or the harder they fall, why aren't you? You could have fought Francis Ngannou. He's with the PFL. If it's about, you know what I mean. If you really want it like that, <coughs> I think that'd be a big good fight. I'd have, I'd have Francis Ngannou knocking Jake's head right off for him. That's what I'd have, for sure. Because Fake Paul and Ngannou are a similar level of clumsy. They're not boxers. They haven't got that slick. They're like it's all out. It's all kind of. Ngannou is actually more fundamental than Fake Paul. But still, people, yeah, if fake Paul really wanted it, get in there with Nate. Because people, let's not forget, yeah, how much did fake Paul weigh? Fake Paul's weighing in like three, 235 to fight Mike Tyson, so he's a heavyweight, yeah? So why don't he take his heavyweight looking ass and get in there with Francis? That's the question. But outside of that, the pot El Potam. El Potam will slap the medieval jaw off this dude, for sure. Slap it off him. Because fake Paul don't have the he don't have the combat confidence that he would need to deal with El Potan. He just doesn't. He just doesn't have that. Yeah, he's only good really versus small dudes. If he can fight someone five foot tall like Gibb, or he has to have all the advantages. He has to have five inches in height, thirty pounds in weight, four weeks notice, old. He has to have every advantage, and then he can win on points or backpedal the whole night. But with El Potan, El Potan is six four. Fake Paul's going to be... And he's big. El Potan can get to 230, no problem. You understand, people? El Potan can get to 230, no problem. El Potan, he 205, bone dry lean. 230, he'll just look big at 230. He won't look soft. Fake Paul looked soft from about 190. He should not be a pound above 190. Ever. He should fight at 175 and put 15 pounds on. In fact... Instead, he comes around like a bag of milk. He has no cardio at all. And he wasn't even being pressed, and he looked gassed. He was gassed, and he wasn't. Mike Perry wasn't doing nothing. Now, Fake Paul said, Oh, talk to Dana. El Potan manager said, We're going to speak to him. Now, I hope that they. If I was Alex Pereira's manager, yeah, I'd remind Dana. I say, hey, look, bum, Uncle Dana. Remember that UFC 303 card that I saved for you? And remember, after that UFC 303 card, what you said to me? You said to me publicly, we all heard it, I'll do anything for this guy. This guy is the man right now. And I remember at the time, back in 2017, that's how Dana White spoke about McTapper. McTapper was always the one saving cards, not pulling out of injuries, etc., etc., and that's why Dana White let that slide. Plus, Dana White hates fake Paul. Dana White's been backing against fake Paul for years. <laughs> ben Askren, he backed him to smoke. He backed Ben Askren to smoke fake Paul. He backed Woodley. He, he, he back and he keep losing. But El Potan, El Potan is the one. Yeah? Alex, the Potan, Pereira will deal with this guy. That's what you best believe, people, and there'll be no doubt about it. But this team need to come about the right way. Now, there's an argument, well, why be Alex Pereira was the light heavyweight champion, he has a serious career, and that's the risk here. The only reason Dana wouldn't sanction it is that Alex Pereira is the big name right now. And if he was to lose to fake Paul, I mean, are people really going to care? Look at McTapper. McTapper lost to Mayweather and then came back and... He was he kind of fell off himself, but the demand's still there, right? He fought, I think he fought Habib after that, so the demand was still there. Nothing really changed. You just say it's not my sport, and he off to Moody HGH. He got that human growth hormone chin for sure. So I wish Dana would do a service to boxing. That's what he needs to do, man. Get El Potan in there with this goofball, because I can't see how Dana doesn't back El Potan against. Against fake Paul, I just don't see it. Yeah, fake Paul ain't like that. He's not like. That. Look how easy Floyd Mayweather dealt with Logan Paul. Logan Paul's even bigger than Jake. He's actually an athlete, Logan Paul. He's not just soft. He's fast as well. Floyd had no problem with, with fake with Logan Paul. Yeah. Now again, Alex Pereira is more of a, a kickboxer, so he relies on his on his kick game as well, which some people have mentioned. But then again, I've seen this footage here. Now this Dempsey McKean cat, Dempsey McKean, he pushed Joe Parker to the, to the limits. And there's some footage here. 
I saw it somewhere. I think Pereira put it on his put it on his story here. Yeah. So there's footage here of look. There's footage here of Pereira <laughs> sparring Dempsey McKean. Dempsey McKean ain't no punk. He's a serious boxer. Now again, it's only sparring. It, it can be um, his best moments or whatever. Again, I don't like how leaky El Potan is. When you're a kickboxer, you rarely see a kickboxer with a hand stuck to the head. You need to be more free of motion and whatnot. In boxing, it is more critical. That's the facts I've come to terms with. It's, it's critical to have your hands up most of the time. That's one lacking thing of Potan. But Fake Paul's the same. Fake, when Fake Paul gets tired, I mean, he, Fake Paul carries hands around here. So Fake people, Fake Paul ain't no good. And El Potan has more experience. And it's harder, in my opinion. And he's actually a finisher. And more gas. And what was the other thing I was going to say? And um, he's harder as well. And he's got the got the range. Yeah, Fake Paul's good at getting off with his big clumsy jab. Looking at the floor with his eyes closed against midgets like Mike Perry. 155 pounders. Old, washed up, 155 pounders. But when Fake Paul looks at the floor and closes his eyes and puts his arm out, Pereira, look, watch this here. This guy, top cruiserweight. I think he's top 10 cruiserweight. I'm sorry, he's top 10. He's not top 10 heavyweight. Let's have a look, Dempsey McKean. Let's look him up. Dempsey McKean box rack. Oh my god. Dempsey, I know there's no P in it. Bit of a violation, I'm going to lie. McKean. Here we go. <coughs> okay, yeah. So this guy, yeah. He top he top draw. He got knocked out in the last round against Hergovic, but Hergovic is he was world champion level. This guy's six six, Dempsey McKean. Dempsey McKean, he's he's been he done sparring for all the top guys. I mean he's what? What is he? And there's his rank. He's number three in Australia, but number 15 in the world. So he's a solid guy, that's fair to say. And that's what El, El Potan was doing. Oh, wow. So you can see there, fabulous, fabulous head movement. Yeah, his hands are a bit low, but his head, so many times there. And that's actually, the easier thing to do is put your hands up. It's actually really hard. Anyone who tried sparring will know. The easiest thing to do is keep your hands here. Yeah, that's the laziest thing anyone can ever do. Keep your hands here. Then you've got putting your hands up. But the hardest thing to do is be able to watch a shot come, slip it, and then counter. And then do something else not to get hit yourself. And that's what, if you watch this video, loads of time Alex is slipping off, popping in. Slip, and people, Dempsey McKean, his, sh his shots are short. Fake pull is throwing arms. And people, all, all the fake pull stands will tell you, oh, bro, angles. Like all the goofy um, commentators. His angles, bro, his angles. No, no, he just sloppy. So when fake pulls, he got his hands here, yeah? And he drags it down to his waist and then looks at the floor, closes his eyes and swings it over. Pereira's going to see that coming a week off. Yeah, if he can slip. Look how he slips some of these shots with Dempsey McKean, some of these short shots. If he's slipping them, fake pull bowling from the waist. And Pereira's going to have three inches of height, three inches of reach, which gives you more time anyway. And he's not a pussy, Pereira. He's not afraid to get hit. Fake Paul going to throw something off. Pereira are going to slip it. And it won't take many times, people. A few times Fake Paul gets countered and punished for looking at the floor. He's going to go into survival mode. That's what's going to happen. And I've been saying it for a while. And people can say, why be? You've been wrong loads of times. That's because no one's executed. Now, the, the Fake Paul Stan argument is the Fake Paul homosexuals will say, oh, I be, you don't understand Fake Paul's IQ. He's, he, he's just, it's impossible to get off against him, people. He's fighting dudes who are useless. Mike Perry, useless, etc, etc. This El Potan cat will punch the head off Fake Paul, for sure. 
and I'm broke right now, but I'm putting, I'm saving up. If this happens, yeah, I'm saving up. I beg it happens. I'm saving up, and this, I'll be going big on this one. Because fake people can't deal with this. A man who wants to fight, and who's taller, and who weighs just as much, if not more, naturally. And who can actually box a bit. These are, these are supreme level skills, really. Slipping and getting off like that. Now, he does get caught. It's a trade-off, right? If you keep your hands down too much, then you do inevitably get caught sometimes. But then if you have your hands up too stiff all the time, you become predictable and you're a bit like a sitting duck. People can just pepper you, which we've seen it before. When uh, when Pitbull fought that um, when Pitbull fought that Spanish dude and he was just boxing him and Pitbull was just following him. Um, or we've seen it, I'm trying to think of other examples. But yeah, Canelo versus Mayweather. You just kind of like a bit lost and if you feel you're a bit slow. So there's a bit of a trade-off, but still I'd like to see Pereira do what he does, but also have his hands a few times in there, for, just for different looks. And that Dempsey McKean, yeah, that Dempsey McKean, he's 250 pound bull. He's a 250 pound bull. Pereira, he's like 220 pounds. Yeah. And this guy's six foot six. Pereira's only six four. So, people, yeah, it could be highlights. Yeah, it can be edited, maybe so. But if you can get off this on an actual pro boxer, top 50 boxer, who's bigger than you, more experienced than you, heavier than you, height, 30 pounds in weight, etc., etc., fake pool when he comes in with his bag of milk looking ass is gonna be. Toast. Please, Dana White. Yeah? Please, Dana White. Do something for the culture for once in your life. How much more money does UFC need? It's time to do some charity work now. That's what Dana White should do. Because the world needs this now. I need to see fake Paul out of here. Yeah? Because Pereira will knock his ass out, I believe. Over eight rounds, he'll knock his ass out, for sure. I just hope Dana's ego don't get in the mix and he starts saying... Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to risk it. No. It's the fight game, Dana. Yeah? If Jake Paul gets clipped by... If El Potan gets clipped by fake Paul, then, then that's the journey he has to make. You know what I mean? If fake Paul sends El Potan on the solemn journey to Valhalla, then that's what he'd have to do. That's how I feel for the, for the culture. For the spirit of the game. You can't have this big bag of milk looking ass pretending he's doing something no more. And to be fair, Mike might handle it. Mike Tyson might handle this problem. He's older, people. 20 years ago, if Mike was like 45, there'd be no question. If Mike was 45, there would be zero question. And I'm trying to think now, what big heavyweights? Why hasn't, why hasn't, why hasn't, um, why hasn't fake Paul called out, I don't know. What's, let's think of a name. Why hasn't he called out... I guess they're not as big commercially. Someone like Klitschko. Oh, mine seen Wilder. Let's see... Let's, let's see Fake Paul versus Wilder. Yeah, one of the messiest fights of all time. Two dudes just... Gangling off. That's the kind of... Listen. The Desert Diddy need to put that fight on. Fake Paul versus Wilder. That's where Wilder's fell off to. If Wilder don't want to fight Dillian White, he need to fight Fake Paul and handle that for us, man. But I, I wouldn't even... I, I'm more confident in in Pereira handling fake Paul than Wilder. I think Wilder's shot to bits. Although he's he, Wilder's so long though, fake Paul wouldn't even get around his jab. But then Wilder don't even really throw his jab properly. But Wilder's so tall, fake Paul wouldn't know what to do. No, I'd, I'd back Wilder to beat fake Paul. I'd put money on that as well. But still, that's what we need right now. We need some sort of Avenger to come in and get rid of this bag of milk. Yeah? I'm tired of seeing him and hearing him. He proper irritates me. Because he's not like that. He's pretend, He's fronting. You ain't hard like that. If you was, you would have handled that with Timmy. And you flapped it and went out sad. Anyway, people, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe, like off the bell, 100%. Not that bad. Stop it.